Hi guys, in this lesson we're going to take a look at the multi-stage counter-current extraction process. This is a continuation of our uh, extraction uh, series in our unit operations course. Here we'll take a look at the working mechanics and the theory behind multi-stage counter-current extraction. So, so far in this part of the course, we've looked at the single stage equilibrium extraction and the single stage liquid liquid extraction. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to take a more realistic approach and we're going to have multiple stages of extraction. Now, the feed the the feed stream that contains the solute A is essentially extracted at one end of the process and the solvent stream enters at the other. So this part here, L0, this is the feed coming into the system that contains the solute A. And then at this side of the system, this is our pure solvent. And as they travel from one stage to the other, the transfer of the solvent, eh, sorry, the solute will get greater and greater as you come this direction and as you go this direction the concentration of the solute in the raffinate will begin to decrease. So the extract in the raffinate streams always flow counter current because counter current provides the greatest difference in the concentrations. And remember, a change in the concentration is the driving force for mass transfer. So by having counter current, we have the greatest delta, uh, delta C, if you want, for concentration um, of each stream as it passes. Whereas if we have co-current, then we don't have such a gradient for uh, mass transfer to take place. Now the nomenclature here is the L0 denotes the feed coming in with the solute. Vn plus 1 is the generic term for how many um, stages we have, that's the solvent. And then Ln is the, again, the number of stages um, value here. And then the extract is V1. So you can see that this will always be higher than this value and this will always be higher than that value. So what we'll do is we'll perform an overall mass balance. So we're not going to account for the individual stages just yet. So we just say what is coming into the system, that would be our feed plus our solvent, which is the Vn plus 1. And that must be equal to what leaves the system, i.e. the raffinate, plus the extract V1. And this, of course, will be equal to M. And that's the, the mixing, the midpoint for the mixing. Now, if we perform a balance on component C, then what we have here is the mass fraction. So that's the X's and the Y's is the mass fractions of C in the given streams. So X denotes the liquid and Y denotes um, the top product. So it can be a liquid. It can also be a vapor. But XC tends to denote the bottom or the, for the raffinate and Y denotes it for the extract because that's what leaves at the top of the column. Now this one here, remember this is the C uh, mass fraction at point M. So we got that from the graph in the previous couple of lessons and when we looked at the exercise on how to find this value. And then what we can then do is if we combine the, these two equations, we can then construct another equation that allows us to determine using the values of the equation to find XCM. And this is for multi-component systems. So what we are saying here is that the amount in the raffinate multiplied by XCN, so that's in the raffinate, plus the extract multiplied by the mass fraction in the extract divided by the totals um, flow of the raffinate and for the extract. Now, again, we could do the same thing and perform the balance on A. It just means that the nomenclature will be slightly different. But again, that will give us our XCM and our XAM values. Now the equations for XCM and XAM are used in order to find the coordinates of point M because that is very, very important on the phase diagram because that's what ties the two entering streams, i.e. F or L0 and Vn plus 1. 
and the two exit streams V1 and LN. So remember this is our inlets and this is our outlets. Now usually the flow and the compositions of the initial feed and the solvent are known and are set at the desired exit composition AXN. So what we tend to have is really only one unknown because we would have to know the composition coming into the stream. We would in essence assume that we have pure solvent and then we would have a desired uh, specification that we want our system to carry out. Now what we then do is we plot all these points and as M it's here on the figure it is a straight line it must connect through these three points so what we mean by this is that if we know this value and we know this value then once we determine the coordinates of m using the xcm and xam we can plot this and then what we can then do is if we fix one of these values then we can use this m point to cut all the way through and find the corresponding um, value that is in equilibrium for that stage. So again, remember your stages always have these four parameters. And in these four parameters, so this would be your Vn plus 1, this is Vn, then this is L uh, not, and this is Ln. So these streams here are in equilibrium with each other and then these streams are in equilibrium with each other so as we can see that the L0 and Vn plus 1 these are in equilibrium through this point M if we know V1 then we can therefore determine the value of Ln because these are also in equilibrium with each other that's these values and so forth so just for multi-component um, systems we therefore will have multiple tie lines so from a stage to stage calculation for the counter current extraction what we have to do is perform the overall material balance and then perform stage by stage balances in order to determine the concentrations at each point we then calculate the total number of stages needed in order to reach the desired raffinate value so we use our, um, our system in order to reach our targeted value. So again, if we look at um, point one, so this would be a balance on stage one. So what we would say is that we have L0 plus V2 equals L1 plus V1. That's fine. Now, on a, an infinite number of stages, because we don't know the number of stages, then essentially what we would do for a generic system is that it would be Ln minus 1 plus Vn plus 1 equals Ln plus Vn. So that's the nomenclature that you have to adopt when you carry these calculations out. Just remember that everything is in equilibrium with each other. So this point here, when these are in equilibrium, that means that V3 and Vn are the same in this instance. So therefore, that would be in equilibrium with each other. And you can see how they then begin to intertwine with each other. Now again, the difference, i.e. we're going to denote this by delta in the flows, is going to be L0 minus V1 and then L1 minus V2. So that's the difference in these flows and we're going to denote that with delta. And that's very important for when we come to model our multi-stage um, graphs. So delta in this case is a flow rate in kilograms per hour and it's constant for all the stages. So once we know it for one of the stages, we assume that it's steady state and that this value of delta will be consistent throughout. So this again holds for the balance in all the individual components as well. So it will perform on an overall balance and it will also do it on a balance of A, a balance of B and a balance of C. So again, what this will look like is if you have your given component, then the, the difference will be constant throughout the entire streams. So it's using the exact same derived formula as we've seen, combining these equations 
and therefore when we rearrange this, we can get the value for delta in terms of the flow rates. So L0 equals delta plus V1, that's fine. Ln equals delta plus Vn plus 1, and so forth. So what this says is that L0 is on the line through the value of delta and V1 at the same time. So they share these values. So L0 shares the value of delta and it shares the value of V1. Now this delta is going to be the same as this delta, which would be the same as this delta. So you can see the consistency that we come back to a common point. So the common point here, also known as the operating point, is our delta. And this is common to all the streams that pass through the system. And as you can see, that we have multiple systems here. We have different stages where our different tie lines. But in essence, what we then have to do is we always come back to our operating point. So this is our reference point that all these other streams will branch out from. So the coordinates in order to locate the operating point are given as the xc delta and xa delta and it's similar to how you would find the xcm and xam values we need to use them in order to determine this point once we have this point then we are good to go so the alternatively what we could do is the delta p sorry the delta point is located graphically in the figure and it's the intersection of all the lines of l0 v1 and so forth so again you can see that all these lines come from here so you can do it graphically but it is sometimes easier to do it using um, equations rather than using the graph now in order to step off the number of stages what we do is we start at l0 and we draw the line l0 multiplied by delta and this would locate the value of V1 on the phase boundary. So as you can see, what we'll have is we'll have the L0 value. And we'll have this, we know this value. And then we'll draw from the operating line through to the L0 value. And as it intersects at this point, this now gives us our V1 value. And then from that, what we can then do is that the next tie line through V1 will then locate the value of L1. Because remember, V1 and L1, they are in equilibrium with each other. So you would again, for this tie line, you would find your value of M and so forth. And then you could determine that this value oops, is L1. And then from that, you could then draw back up to the delta uh, operating point and that would give you the value of v2 and then you would do the exact same thing you do your tie line that would find l2 up again and down again and you would eventually reach your ln value so that's the end of this lesson thanks for watching hopefully this was helpful in helping your understanding of the multi-stage counter current extraction processes we look at a working exercise in our unit operations online course if you like this video, please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps boost the channel in reaching as many chemical engineers as possible. So thank you for your time and we hope to see you in another video.